dear father thank you for the forgiveness of sins and for the gift of righteousness if you hold sin against anyone no one can stand thank you because in christ we are joint heirs thank you because in christ we are blessed thank you because in christ there is hope and glory we give you praise and glory once again we're gathered in the name of the lord jesus as we step into your word speak to every heart we ask you in jesus mighty name we pray praise the lord don't sit down yet help me grab your neighbor with the two hands and say the glory of the lord is upon your life look at your neighbor and say the glory of the lord is upon your life say the rest of this year will be full of god's work the rest of this year will be full of god's work amen praise god hallelujah please you can have your seat let, let me show you where i read that from quickly in the book of psalm 118 verse 20 psalm 118 verse 20 praise the lord last sunday was splendid we just prayed hallelujah we just prayed it was wonderful it just wonderful it just you know it was wonderful it was wonderful hallelujah No, that's not the scripture I'm looking for. I'm looking for it's the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our sight. Let me look for it. Okay. See what? Let's read together. I want to go. Three things to note. Number one, if it's the Lord's doing, we always marvel. So don't say have a test, small testimony. God does not do small things. Praise God. God does not what do small things. So there's no what small testimony. That's why every time you have testimony, be rushing it up like Indomi. Praise God. Why? It is the Lord's doing, and it's what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Dr. Fenner, come and share your testimony. Come. I was, you know, since we spoke about a testimony, and you shared one with me, you know. He's now, bas- he's now based abroad. I don't want to announce the country you're based in, so they don't arrest you, because you're meant to be part of something you're not yet. Yeah. Uh, good morning, church. Pastor V. Um, just so, one minute version so, of the yeah, long so, testimony. So, so, so just one minute version. So I think my story is really one that I used to I used to beg for transport at Falomar here. Um, and in the last, I don't know, the last two, three years, I'm presently the first black person who was the youngest to get on Forbes Council internationally. Um, my book was an Amazon best-selling across the world in strategic management. Lagos State Government appointed me as the chairman of the Cybersecurity Board for the governor. Um, and just over the weekend, um, we got a letter from the presidency. I was given a National Merit Award. Congratulations. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes we don't share the stories, but we just need to put it out there. So this is, so I'll say, what will the rest of the year look like? This is what it look like. I said, this is what... So, the rest of the year will be full of the Lord's doing. What is the Lord's doing? God did this. God did this. God did this. God did this. He said, this is the Lord's doing and it's what? Marvelous in our sight. Give me, the, give me, is it the Passion Translation that we read? You know, was it the Passion Translation during NLP? Now we know those that attended NLP or those that didn't. They say, this is God's work. No, no, no. It's, let's look at the, either the message or living translation. They say, this is God's work. One of the translation. It's message, message 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 yeah 
can you okay you've read you've added more verses to us so this is what i'll say it says this is what we rub our eyes we can hardly believe it so the rest of this year what will you be seeing god's work in your finances god's work in your marriages god's work in your health god's work so when someone say how is it says god's work hallelujah it, it says this is god's work like like the rest of and that's why i don't know if you noticed this if you didn't you can go back and check it online i posted it there i said the rest of the year is full of god's work it's full of god's work he says and what is god's word we will rub our eyes and we will hardly believe it the rest of the year is full of what god's work amen, amen. praise god hallelujah our foundation our foundation course has started our foundation course has started our foundation course is a course to help you become grounded in christ grounded in doctrines so it has started the first the last class was on what foundation you need to join the class if you have not joined it quickly it is a, you can send us a message or check an information desk and we can run that by you glory to god the last thing that i want to talk about is all married men just let, so you can mark the dates married men we have uh ooh, it's not in this notebook um married men we have network network we have network for all men that are married um let me get some people to help me where's Bodala Dumoya? i saw him just earlier where's femi yeah come 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 where's wally i saw wally also come 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 where's captain yeah so the three of you can just stand here can can just stand here so i'll tell you what we're going to do then i can join them i can also can join them yeah he was looking at ways i don't find him so that that made me find him actually the easiest for me to call you is for me to for you to look away you know yeah captain just just face the church don't face me you know just face the church so if you're a married man here after the service link up with them and they will give you information um for next week you will get these cards that will tell you um an invite card but it will also tell you something like what would you like to who would like to meet with do you want to meet people in oil and gas do you want to meet people in real estate do you want to meet people with um you know that kind of thing it also asks you what we like to eat do you like you know, it's going to be like you know it's going to be like a breakfast meeting no i think it's a dinner actually you know it's either breakfast or dinner it's going to be like um you know what do you like to eat do you like to eat chinese do you like to eat this so it's going to be really nice for all the married men praise the lord so ju just link up with any of these four of them and we'll do that nice thing amen thank you god bless you yeah you can go back to your seat hallelujah pastor g has surprised at my strength right where's pastor g yes well my strength right even myself i'm surprised at my strength glory to god esther chapter 4 verse 17 i'm going to teach quickly so married men but the, the um it's network so it's an avenue four things happen in network number one we get to pray together number two you get to build relationships with people that are very successful different phase of life then the third thing that happened in network is the fact that you will hear inspiring stories we have a guest speaker coming i'm not just speaking we have a guest speakers coming you hear inspiring stories of people like you know like fairness story you know people that were begging on follow more streets now having national award people that um their businesses the five ten years ago they were nothing now they are doing billions and billions and billions and billions and if you have such stories or such friends let us know see those men and let us know it would be nice to hear the reason why i'm saying so is it ever look at me something i wish our government can learn to solve yahoo problem something i wish they can learn and if you know anybody in government tell them i said this they would never solve yahoo problem by increasing efcc cyber security it will never solve it yahoo problem is a question of modeling the young people sit down and see everybody that made it in nigeria people that made it in nigeria 80 percent either stole or they work with someone that had opportunity or stole praise the lord 80 percent so what do you tell them you say that when you get there still can i say something you have not seen thieves yet in nigeria let this generation get into politics <laughs> i'm telling you 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 all of a are complaining this, 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 this. you've not seen what people are stealing is teachers play let this generation the reason why is that what they are doing now is seed this generation will take it as seed and will turn it to harvest and the way you can easily change that 
is that by sharing people that really worked hard, like Fene, like, like, you know, like Femi, they didn't go here, they didn't go there, put those stories in front of them, I want people to like, okay, wow, I can actually walk out and do something with my life. The reason why a lot of pastors go into ministry in Nigeria is because of one man. His name is Archbishop Bessin Dahusa. That's the reason why. Because everybody saw a model that we all could follow. And until that is changed. So, so for men, one of the reasons why we're telling these stories is not because we think they're better than you are or something. That's not the reason why. It's just to inspire. Like, oh wow, okay, so you were like this before. See the way you are. See what happened to you. Like, I mean, many of you know my stories. I mean, there was a, when this church started, I couldn't earn a salary. After they said to pay me a salary, I was earning 3000 naira per month. 3000 naira per month. That was how much I was paid. I was driving a car that was driving me. Praise the Lord. Damn, I mean, my car, radiator wasn't, I just used to have a keg of water in the car in case it stopped working. I opened it and I filled it. But here we are today. Yeah. And, and the reason I'm saying that there are some ladies that want to marry finished products. Ladies, it's better to be part of the story. And let me tell you something. If you're trying to marry a made man, most of the time, it's been difficult for you to find one because that made man was, was worked on by somebody else. That made man was worked on by somebody else. So when you look at someone, you're like, ah, you cannot take care of me. Someone says, so who should I marry? I never said marry someone that will promise. Marry patterns. Don't marry someone that has big vision because vision may not manifest. Marry pattern. What is pattern? What's the difference? Vision is that I will, I shall, I will, I shall. It may never manifest. What is pattern? You saw the man grow from 50K to 70K. You saw him move from 70K to 100K. You saw him move from 100K to 120 You can tell that if you give this guy more time, it will move very well. And men, the balance to it is this. Women, some women are after money when it comes to relationship. Some women are not looking for love. They're looking for sponsor. But the balance is this. A lot of women are not looking for money. They just want to make sure that they will not be the one taking care of the man. And the man will have financial capacity to stand by themselves. The reason why is that they've seen what happened to their mothers. How their mothers went into old age. Not because they were old. Because they carry financial burden at a young age that they shouldn't carry. And you see it's American history. The men will get the women pregnant, take off. And the women will be taking care of the children. Praise God. Esther chapter 4 verse 7. Hallelujah. Esther chapter 4 verse 7. So I'm going to read a brief, brief story to us about Esther. And I'm going to, this Sunday is going to conclude our teaching on last days. And um, next month we're going to move to In Christ Realities. Then um, September is our, of course everybody knows September is our fasting and praying month. Hallelujah. Yeah, so we have a lot of things, you know, planned for September already. So we have it planned for September. Once we are back from NLP in the U.S., which is, um, you know, we have a lot of plans for September. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Esther chapter 4 verse 7. Yeah. Esther chapter 4 verse 7. So this, in this story, and, and this story, this is your story. In this story, um, I don't know if you know what had happened. Esther was the queen, but she, was, she had not disclosed her personality. She had not disclosed who she was, where she was from. And um, a deputy of the king got very upset. A deputy of the king got very upset with Esther's uncle and the whole tribe and planned maliciousness for them to be wiped out. Glory to God. I mean, I wish I could talk about that, but uh, let's just leave it as simple as it is. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that says that when the enemy rose to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Hallelujah. Don't worry that they take your name to places. It says they will stumble and fall. Glory to God. So back to the conversation. So, um, so Esther's uncle began to reach out to Esther and say, Hey, Esther, you have proximity to the king. Can you talk to the king so that the whole of the Jews will be saved? Then Esther began to back out and all of those kind of things. We're going to read the story right now. Esther chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says, And Mordecai told him of all that happened to him 
and of the sum of money that Haman had paid to the king's treasury for the Jews to destroy them. So that's it, to destroy the Jews. Verse 8. Verse 8. And he also gave him the copy of the writing of the decree given at Shushan to destroy the Jews and to show it unto Esther and to declare unto her to charge her. He said the purpose of this was to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication, to beg for him and to make requests before him for the people. Verse 9. The Bible says, and Achat came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. So the thing is that because Esther had access, Mordecai, her uncle said, hey, just go into the king and talk to, for the king, for the Jews. Verse 10, verse 10. The Bible says, and again, Esther speak unto Hatche and gave him this command to Mordecai. What did Esther say? Look at verse, verse, the next verse. It says, all the king's servants and all the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, into the inner court who is not called, Therefore, there's one law of, he, of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that, continue, that he may live, and I have not been called unto the king these 30 days. He says, the king has not called me 30 days. The custom was that you don't just come to the king, even if you're his wife, he must invite you. And if you go, if you badge in unto the king, the king will kill you, except it stretches to you what the golden scepter. So the Bible says, um, Esther said, I've not been called to the king in 30 days. I've not seen him in 30 days. Literally meaning that, hey, Mordecai, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing, there's nothing I can do. The king has not called me. I, if I go right now, I could get killed. Look at the next line. The next verse. And they told this word to Mordecai. <laughs> and they told Mordecai Esther's word. But, but, I continue. Then Mordecai commanded him to answer Esther. Everybody needs a Mordecai in your life. Who is the Mordecai? Listen to who Mordecai is. Will you receive this? Mordecai is the one that cannot enter the palace but opens the door for you to enter the palace. Mordecai was the one that gave Esther access. And everyone needs people in your life that will open the door and see you shine and they're okay with being in the background. You must be careful. You must be careful about people that are very competitive when you do well that you call your friends. Because sometimes they are not friends, they are friend enemy. And, and let me tell you something. You must also realize and just relax. If your friend is shining, just learn how to celebrate your friend. Praise God. Sometimes when your friend is telling you something good happening to them, you don't have to share your own. Let them enjoy the moment. Let them shine in the moment. Let them celebrate the moment. Let's just enjoy what God is doing in their life. It's not a competition, it's a complimentation. Praise God. Mordecai. So, so the first thing about Mordecai, Mordecai is a person that opens the door. And let me tell you something. If you have messed up relationship with Mordecai because you go to the palace, go back and fix it. Because the person that opens the door can also close it. Ooh. <laughs> Who is Mordecai? Mordecai is the one that opens the door. Hey, Mordecai does not get into the palace. You know who Mordecai is? Mordecai could be your boss secretary. He may not have the authority, but he can open the door. And the reason why many people are stuck is because they've, they've, they've destroyed relationships that opened the door because it didn't seem valuable when they passed through the door. If you pass through the door, the person can have another door you have to pass through again. But that's the thing about Mordecai. Mordecai is something else. Mordecai is also the person that holds you accountable to bigger standards. Everybody needs someone in your life that will hold you to bigger standards. I, I mean, everybody needs someone in your life that when you want to get a divorce, when you tell him, you say, are you mad? Go back there and sit down there. One time, man, my wife had a quarrel. I was so upset. I locked myself at home and I didn't want to hear anything. And my wife knew that I'd never been this kind of upset. And she called my pastor. And when I saw my phone ring, I knew the fight was over. And I, I, I said, hello, sir. He said, ah, how are you, Pastor Bola? Yes, I'm very fine, sir. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, your wife called me. He said, first of all, go and open the door. <laughs> I, I said, sir, let me explain. He said, before you explain, go and open the door. He said, before you explain, he said, open the door and call me back. <laughs> you need that kind of relationship. And listen to me. If you want to date a man or a woman, one of the questions you must ask is that, who is he accountable to? People that are accountable to no one are dangerous people. Every goat and sheep has rope. Does your own man have rope? Does your own woman have rope? 
And that's why they can do anything anyhow. Because there's nobody that will hold them accountable. So who is Mordecai? Mordecai is that person. Mordecai is that person that holds people accountable. People that can challenge you. People that can, they, you, know, you know, you know they love you. But they love you enough not to let you be, not to let you spoil. They love you but they will not allow you to spoil. They will look at you in the face and say, eh, no, you messed up. I want to argue your way out. And they look at you and say, eh, no, I said you messed up seven times. And I say, yeah. I messed up. And when they say, finish messing you up, they will cover you. Because they don't talk about, they don't talk about your people. They talk about you with you and cover you. Let me ask your neighbor, do you have a Modica in your life? The reason why I'm saying so is that everybody at one area of life will want to derail. And that means it's the truth. Anybody will want to derail. People will lose focus. That's a natural human tendency. He says, so Esther said, Esther said, hey, there's nothing I can do. It's all over. You know, this and this. Esther lost focus. She had, she had lost focus on the bigger picture. Mordecai is the one that says, come on. You need people that when you want to buy a car, you should not buy. They'll be like, ah, what's wrong with you? Why are you buying that kind car? You need people that when you bring a setting girl home or a setting man home, they will call you into the room and say, you didn't do well. Go back and choose. <laughs> Praise God. You need people that when, you, when they see some picture of you on Instagram where you are posing as body, they will call you and say, remove the picture. Praise God. Yeah. I said, Praise God. You need people that when your wife says, I will tell, you say, uh, no, it's not that deep now. Oh, I was just joking. Just fix it. And the reason why is that in the multitude of cancer, there's what? the safety. It's not everyone. Listen to me. Such people in your life cannot more than three most of the time. If you're lucky, they can get me because that depth of relationship takes time to cultivate and it takes a lot of energy to service. So Mordecai commanded to answer his side. She commanded. Esther was the queen. Oh, this when you see Mordecai, they don't care how much you have. Oh, Mordecai is not the one that because you have money now will not be turning their mouth. They will tell you as it is, and say, "Are, are you okay? Because you are not driving rage, but I want to marry a second wife." Mordecai will tell you as it is. He says. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think not with yourself. Esther was the king. Mordecai was the servant. But Mordecai raised Esther. He said, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house. More than all the Jews. Verse 14. He says, if thou altogether hold your peace, if you keep quiet at this time, just know something. Then shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and your father's house shall be destroyed. He says, that, that, then this is where I'm going to. Everybody read the last night. I want to go. And would know it. That's what I'm going to. Who knows if this is the reason, if this is the center, if this is the core of the reason why you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. He was telling Esther, if you miss this, you miss destiny. If you miss this, you miss purpose. If you miss this, you miss everything. Everything comes to nothing. L let me tell you, did you, when you were in secondary school, did you do quiet? One guy got math, English, physics, geography, biology, and got F in French, Yoruba, fine art, and something. Was that, is that a good result? One guy got A2 in Yoruba, A1 in French, A1 in Christian religious knowledge, A1 in what? What? agricultural science he got you know then he got f9 in math and english what is it it's a bad the reason why is that because subject he failed in it when it comes to the things of god and life they are core subjects don't fail in it it, it doesn't matter so because some of you don't know when it comes to things of god they are core subjects i mean finance is good and that is good but they are core subjects 
don't fit in it. And what, what Mordecai was telling, what Mordecai was telling Esther is this. He said, Esther, no matter what you have done before, if you fail in this one, you have failed everything. I, I love the way he says it. He says, who knows if the purpose for you to come to the kingdom is for what? Such a time as this. As I begin to delve into the rest of the teaching today, just in the sh- f- time I have, I want to talk to you quickly about why are you here at such a time like this? And I'll give you some background. Who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this? You know, as soon as Esther heard that, if you read the red verses, Esther said, Mordecai, he told Mordecai, go back. He said, go and tell Mordecai, my head is now correct. He said, whatever I will do, I will do. If I die, I die. Because there was someone that was able to reset a button and reset a purpose. And the purpose of this teaching is that in case you have lost focus, you can be reset today. Who knows? Because one of the things I, one of the things I get to ask myself is this. Why do we get born again and God leaves us on earth? I mean, once you get born again, just go to heaven. <laughs> that would be great. No temptation. No need of looking back. That's it. But the reason why God left us on earth was because there will be no way to influence other people except we're here. So as Christians, who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. What have you come to the kingdom for? One of the reasons why you have come to the kingdom is to make a difference. If you want to give the t- message a title, making a difference. If one of the things you have come to is to make a difference. Who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this? The Bible says in Matthew 5, it says you are the light of the world. It says you are the salt of the earth. It says the city that is set on the hill cannot be eaten. Who knows if you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this? Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. This is the second reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Hallelujah. See what the Bible says here. It says this. Let's read one to go. Let's read this one, the scripture from eschatology. One to go. Let's go. Everybody go. Let's go. One to go. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to all he had done, whether what? So it says that there's, we're explaining to you that after the rapture, two things will happen simultaneously. In heaven, what will happen? There will be the judgment seat of Christ. There will be the marriage supper of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ. On earth, the great, the Antichrist will start reading and there will be what? The great tribulation. What happens in the judgment seat of Christ? So this is the difference. There's benefit and there's reward. In Christ, there are benefits. In Christ, there are rewards. I've given, uh, yeah. In Christ, there are benefits. In Christ, there are rewards. Reward is tied to what you did. Reward is tied to what, what you did. So see what it says here. It says, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Why? That everyone may receive the things done in the body. So if you didn't do anything for Christ in the body, there will be nothing to receive. You know, when you get to, when you get to heaven... I wish God is going to look at you and say that you had so much steez and reward you for that. There's no reward for steez. There's no reward for how much you look. There's no reward for how much you don't look. What does God reward for? One of the key things that God rewards for is how much people you have brought to Christ. And everything you must be count, you must be, you know, some of you have real estate investment, which is wonderful, but do you have kingdom investment? Do you have kingdom investment? He says that for we must appear. He says all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive. Can you give me the passion translation of this verse, please? Glory to God. He says we must all appear before the passion, the, the passion translation, please. Yes, for one day we will be openly revealed before Christ on his throne so that each of us will be duly recompensed for all our action done in life, whether they are good or whether they are worthless. I don't know how it will be like, but in heaven, there's going to be a segment that's going to be like an award night. I mean, you watch the Grammys before, and in the Grammys, you know, can you give me one of those microphones? You know, in the Grammys, yeah, yeah, give me this one of those microphones, you know. You, you can just leave it like that. Does it work? 
Yeah, in the Grammys, you hear things like, uh, the next category of nominees, the next category of nominees, the next categories of nominees are for what? Gospel bodies, you know. Uh, next category of nominees are for what? You know, give me a category, please. What? What? Next, uh, for African movie, praise God. Next category for African movie, best actor, African movie. And someone say, nominees are, and they will mention, and they will mention, nominees are, and the winner is. And you know I'm saying so because in heaven, I don't know if the angels are going to do this. <laughs> but when they say that, these are the categories of people that made a difference. And they start calling nomination. Will your name be there? You know, you know the thing, eh? When you are going for a Grammy, there are two kinds. The people that dress up the most knows that they are likely to win something. There are people that don't dress up a lot because they know they will not come. We, question. Do you know they will call you in heaven? Or you know you will not be called? He says that for we must openly be revealed before Christ on this throne. Each of us duly compensated for the actions done in life. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So number one, I want to talk about why do we win souls for Christ? Why do we win souls for Christ? Number one, why do we win souls for Christ? Number one, eternal rewards will be based on soul winning. Eternal rewards, that's something good to write down in your notebook. Eternal rewards will be based on soul winning. Eternal rewards will be based on soul winning. Glory to God. Eternal rewards will be based on soul winning. Number two, why do we win souls for Christ? Number two, God will hold you responsible for the people around you that do not know him. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, go ahead. It's a long reading. Son of man, speak unto them. Speak unto the people. Say, when I bring the soul upon the land, if the people will take a man of their coast and set him as a watchman, continue please. And if he, if he sees the sword, watch this. If the watchman sees the sword come upon the land, he will blow the trumpet and warn the people. Continue, please. Yeah. And whosoever heard the sound of the trumpet and take not the warning, if the sword comes and take him, his blood shall be upon his head. Verse 5. Verse 5. And if he heard the sword, if he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not the warning, his blood shall be upon him. And he that taketh... No, no, I've not finished reading, please. And he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Verse 6. But if the watchman see that the sword comes and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, the sword will come and take any person from amongst them. He is taken in his iniquity. But read the next line, please. It says, but what? His blood. Will I what? Require. Are the what? You know what God is saying? God is saying, I know they will go to hell. He said, but I will require the blood at the hand of the watchman. You know what that means? You are the watchman for your friends. Let, 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 let me paint a scenario to you, and this is not a perfect scenario. You borrow clothes from your friends. You go to weddings together. You ride in their cars together. But you have never one day invited them to church. If they go to hell and you go to heaven, when they are in hell, what will be the impression of you? That Shaniqua, we did all of this together and there was no one day you told me I was going to burn in hell forever. That's unfair. Many of you have friends. You walk together. You eat together. You play together. You share the same flat together. You are in school together. Your kids are in school together. You see them all the time. And you never take one day to say, hey, I just want to talk to you about eternity. I want to ask you something. Why do you think God put them in your life? Is it not because he wants you to make a difference? Just like the word of Esther. Who knows if you are at this time for such a time as this. Come closer. When your friends begin to tell you about how their marriage is troubled, when, you're, when you read that post on Instagram about depression, do you ever think, who knows, for such a time 
as this. Kudos. You need to ask yourself, and that was what Esther forgot. Esther forgot that there's a bigger purpose. Let me tell you what God does. God intentionally allows some people come into your life because he's hoping you will share the gospel with them. Intentionally. God allows you to hear the story. He's hoping you will share the gospel with them. Intentionally, God does that. But the question is that, can God actually depend on you? You know, look at all the men that are your friend. Look at all the women that are your friend. Look at everybody that you know. For who knows why God is doing that for such a time as this. See what it says now. Let me read this to you. He said, but if the watchman see the sword coming and he does not blow the trumpet, the watchman is you. If you refuse to share the gospel with your friends, with your friends at work, with your friends in the office, with your friends in school, he says, and the people be not warned. He said, the sword will come and take any person from amongst them. And he is taking in his own equity. That is his own business. But see what it says. He says, but his blood will I require at your hands. Can you stretch out your hands? Let me ask your neighbor. I hope there's nobody's blood that God will require to your hand. No, let me ask your neighbor with a serious face. Say, I hope there's nobody's blood God will require to your hand. And before you answer that question, think of the person you work with. If that girl dies tomorrow, would that girl say, Oh, she spoke to me about Christ? She invited me to church one day, she sent me an invite. If your neighbor dies tomorrow, would they be able to say that? Or their blood will be required at your hand. So one of the reasons why we win souls, I'm going to make it faster now. Number one, we win souls because God will hold us responsible for those around us that do not know Christ. Number three reason why we win souls is this. Because of the eternal end of the wicked. Because of what? The eternal end of the wicked. Psalm 9 verse 17. Psalm 9 verse 17. I led the scripture, I learned the scripture in 1993. It shook the living day out of me hallelujah look at what it says it says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget, that forget god whenever i think that the people that are my friends are going to hell that's my motivation to win them to christ it's not going to be on they are good they are kind they are soft-spoken all that is irrelevant is the fact that they would actually go to hell. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell. I don't know if you've ever read some 20, um, sorry, Revelation 20 before. The Bible says hell and death and hell shall be turned into hell. And that shall become the lake of fire. And the fire will burn forever and ever and ever. Just imagine eternity in hell fire. This is the reason why. There's a reason why all of you that have children, you must call your children from time to time and say, hey, did, have you received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? So the reason why we preach the gospel is because we're convinced of the gospel that those that are far from Christ will turn up in hell. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Just one more reason why we preach the gospel so that we can receive the crown of righteousness. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5 and to verse 8. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5 to verse 8. Hallelujah. The crown of righteousness. See what it says here. Lovely. It says, but thou watch in all things, endure affliction. That means to do this can be difficult. It says endure affliction. It says make full proof of meaning. It says, no, no. It says do the work. It says every Christian do what? Do the work of an evangelist. Don't say I'm not a pastor. Every one of us is commanded to what? Do the work of an evangelist. Every one of us is commanded to do the work of an evangelist. He says, make full proof of your ministry. Continue verse 6. For See what Paul says. Paul says, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul says, I can tell. The signals are there that I'm going to die soon. The signals are there. I'm going to die soon. Look at verse 7. He says, and I fought a good fight. Can you say that? I want to ask you something. By the time you leave your office, can you say that I fought a good fight here? That the purpose for which God sent me to walk in access bank has been fulfilled. Because God had the bigger purpose than you making money. By the time you leave that estate, what estate now? Give me an estate's name. Banana Island. By the time you move from Banana Island, will you be able to say 
that wow the purpose for which god promised banana island have fulfilled it by the time you graduate from university of unsuka will you be able to say that the purpose for which god brought me here have fulfilled it the reason why is that paul said i have fought a good fight listen to me you don't have to get to the other side to know that i fulfilled it you can be here and know i finished it paul was alive and they knew i have finished what my cause I want to ask you some of you god will just give you a relationship with your boss with younger people with friends do you know the reason why god gives you that grace because in it is a bigger assignment esther forgot she became the queen and Mordecai had to remember tell her who know it if you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this all the guys that are toasting you some of them is not for dating some of them is for kingdom your beauty is the tool. Who knows? For such a time as this, all the, you, 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 your, your family, you have family, friends, you have people that stay with you. Who knows? Why did they always want to talk to you about their marriage? Why did they always look up to you? All the people you mentor, who knows? And you know the thing, you're so respectful, you can tell them about business, about this, but when it comes to gospel, you say, I don't want to invade on them. I'm sure when you see them in hell, you'll regret that decision. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. He says, I finished my course. He says, I have what? Kept the faith. Look at, look at the next verse. Let's look at the next verse. And this is what I'm hoping you will get. This is what I hope to get also. He says, Here's fought. There's what? There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You know, just yesterday, yesterday I went to a mall and I was trying to buy ice cream for my kids and the family. And, you know, I bumped into these two ladies and, you know, I just said, hey, I just want to invite you to church. And so, like, ah, Pastor, you see, invite people to church. I said, That's what I'm born for. Jesus was a soul winner. I can't graduate from being a soul winner. And I'm hoping that in one of the services today, they're going to turn up and we're going to say hello to them. And yesterday alone, I invited about four people to church. And I'm saying so because you can't graduate from soul winning. It's your life purpose. Who knows if that have come for such a time as this see what 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 paul said he said hangs forth because i'm a soul winner he says there's laid up for me what a crown of righteousness which the righteous just shall give me on that day is it is it special to me alone read the next line and not to only me to what to all them that love is appearing i hope you get the crown i hope you get the crown i hope you get the crown Paul said, I, I wish this crown is just for me. And I, Paul said, I wish this is for me. But he said, it's not just for me. He said, for everyone that loves is appearing. And when we get to heaven and the crowns are being given out, I hope you'll be full of joy and no regrets. And social media has made it so easy to win souls right now. So easy to win souls right now. Glory to God. Let me close by saying, how do, I, how do I get to win souls? Can I give you seven things to do to win souls? Everybody write it down. Because they're like, okay, 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 I want, to, I want to win souls. I want to win souls. Let me also tell you why you want to win souls. Because of the depreciation. Some people's life will get rotten, bad, disgusted. If not. I always think about it. What would my life be if not for God? Some of you knew what you were. You knew what you were. You were a rock star. If not for God, you know, the other day I watched, you know, the, there's a lady in our church, you know, I can mention the name, it was on social media, Vicky James, you know, and she, there was this picture where she was dancing inappropriately on social media, and she was just like an old video, and all of those kind of things, and someone wrote in the comment section, ah, ah, and someone said, the video comment was like, it trended to like, this is Vicky James' video when she was a body, and it was, you know, trending, and someone says, this is the kind of body that Pastor Blanchard moved from street. Why? He <laughs> said, why? He said, can't you convert the simple ones? We need this kind of bodies on the streets. But, but, but that's the thing. Let me tell you something. What would he have been if not for Christ? Like, what would have been if not for Christ? I, I know people in this section that were doing Yahoo. I know people in this section that were doing Yahoo. We, we have pastors today that were Yahoo boys. Maybe if not for Christ, they would right now be with Hush Puppy somewhere. <laughs> Pastor Lee, stand up. You know, Pastor Lee, stand up. 
if not for Christ. If not for Christ. No, it's, it's not the Yahoo pastor. The Yahoo pastor is covering his face. I don't call him. And it's illegal things. So I can't, you know. But if not for Christ, all the drinking and the women. No, no. Is this not the future you thought that God, but God just caught you somewhere in between. Praise God. Who did God catch again? Are they here? If not for Christ. All these people that say, praise the Lord, if you know what they were before. I mean, someone, you know, because in our church people talk, one guy gave a testimony and one girl takes it that this guy is born again. He said, I'm coming to church. Yeah, he said, I'm coming to church. Ah, he said, even my sin, no rich is own. Ah, he said, when I was a sinner, I was a sinner sinner. Ah, he said, no, he said, I was, a, I was a sinful intern. When he was, he was my professor. If God can change him, God can change me. See, that's the beauty. The beauty, the beauty is what one person can be when Christ comes into their life and their life is radically transformed. It's a story of amazing grace. And that's why I love our church that we make the effort to reach people. So when they say people are worse, harvesters go for people that are this. I say, that's what a church is. It's about reaching people that are far from Christ because their story will change. Seven things to do to, get, to help people get. But number one, see yourself as a light. That's the first thing. See yourself what? As a light. So I want to ask you a question. When you see people do all sorts of negative on social media, we don't criticize them. We are the light. Doctors don't complain of blood. They treat it. We don't complain of sin. We are the light. We, we bring light to it. So you see that you see, you see see that married woman cheating on her husband with your boss in the office. Don't be like, hey, my God, she's so loose. No. Get close to her. I'm here for you. People talk about you, but I, I just want to let you know, I know what's going on, and I will never talk about, bad about you. If you need to talk, you can always talk to me. That's it. Be the light. Be the light. Be the light. Don't be the one that criticizes. Be the light. See, you are the light of the world. You, you know what it means to be the light? When you drive and park, give those people that park your cars money. Be the light. Don't be overpricing. The woman is selling plantain. Everything she's selling is 10,000 there. Yet, you want to buy one boat. She says 1,000. You say, oh, uh, madam, okay, 2,415. You should even look at her and be like, this woman, what will it cost you to have an extra 2,000? You know, take 3,000. I need one, but I'm giving you. Because that's what it means to be the light. That girl that's heartbroken in your office and she's going into depression and feeling suicidal, send them some nice flowers. Send them a cake. And she'll be like, do you like me? He said, no, 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 no. I don't have any kind of crush on you. I don't intend to date you. I just want you to realize that you're a wonderful person and I appreciate you without any sexual or relationship intention. I'm just the light of the world. Praise the Lord. When you're cooking this week, take food and take to the office. Take to the office and say, why are you giving us food? I'm the light of the world. I show love. I'm the light of the world. 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 Praise God. I'm the light of the world. Do you know how easy, when you bought them Chicken Republic, how easy it is to invite them to church? When you have sent them a bottle of wine, how easy it is to invite them to church? Listen to me. Selfishness is not good. Selfishness will repel good people from you. Don't have a kagom and selfishness repels good people. Generous generosity attracts goodness to your life. Learn to be generous. Generosity can be painful initially, but it has great rewards in the future. Every single time, learn to be generous. And when you give to people, don't give hoping they will give you back. It will break your heart. And the way God does it, God uses people you don't give to bless you back so that you don't politicize your giving. Praise God. So you're the light of the world. When you come to church, you say, I don't have shoes here. You know, you know this morning, um, where's Darlington? Where, where, what have you for Darlington? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Bring it. Are you wearing it already? Is it your car? So it was his birthday and I got him this nice street watch. I like it. Hey, Darlington, I got him this nice street watch and bought it for him. You know, and that's the thing. You must, someone says, 
you know, so says, is that, that's what it is. I, I didn't even plan to do that with the message, but that's what it is. What does it give someone something? Ah, some of you can collect, oh. You can collect, oh. Hey, every time. You don't remember me. You don't remember me. You don't remember me. You don't remember me. You, who do you remember? I need, I need, I need. Have you asked what do you need? You are the light of the world. You come to church. Someone's shoes is not fine. You have better shoes. Give them. How many of you in your house now? Wedding material, wedding gifts you are not using. Ten years. Bring it out. Help others. Be the light. Number two. Hallelujah. Number two. Pray and be sensitive. What do I say? Pray and be sensitive. Pray and what? Be sensitive. What do I mean? If I'm praying, let's say I'm praying for Chisom, I want Chisom to get born again. I'll start praying for Chisom every day. The reason why is that that getting born again is a spiritual decision. God needs to open his heart. The scale of darkness was full of. So I pray. Why am I sensitive? Once you begin to pray, this will happen. God will give you an inroad to enter. Be sensitive. The inroad can be like one day, Chisom will just put on his status. I'm just tired of everything. And that can be your signal. Always look for that signal. That signal. I'm thinking of what to do on Sunday. That's your signal. Invite him to church. When people are going through pain or transition, it's a good time to reach them for Christ. When people are going through what? Pain or transition, it's a good time to reach them for Christ. Praise God. The next thing they do, share. Someone say, I don't know how to preach. You don't need to know how to preach. Just share your story. How was it, buddy? Jesus saved me. Ha! Me, I used to run everything before. Ah, all my friends are married. It's me that normally organize them. Jesus saved me. He has never finished saving me. I'm in saving. I'm saved. I'm in transition. The reason why is that the biggest advert of the gospel is a changed life. Share your story. All the woman said was, "Come and see." If you don't have a story, all the stories you hear in church, who come and see? So all these pastors are fake. The way you know a fake pastor is that your family members not attend church. My own family attend church. My sister-in-law is always there. Right there is my cousin. That, that we went to secondary school together. Right there, just before the camera, is my cousin. And he's always there. The reason why is that this is what I've done for a long time. Pastor Luke is there. She's known me since when I was eight years old. And she's one of our pastors. And the reason why I'm saying so is that it's difficult to trust other people's stories, but when you say the stories of people around you, you can be like, I don't know what goes on social media, but you, I know. Share your own story. Share your own story. Do you know I had a lump in my breast during NLP? It disappeared. Put it on your status. So your friends say, Really? Because they think everything is made up. Share your own story. And let me tell you, when you share it, be consistent because it's not by sharing it once that they get born again. It's not by inviting someone to church once that they get born again. Share it over and over and over again until their heart begins to melt, melt, and salvation enter. The question, the closing is this Who knows if you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows if the reason why you work where you work, you know the people you know, you are in that school, you are in that relationship, is for such a time as this? Let's stand up and pray.